Hello and welcome to this Saturday edition of The Box Seat. I'm Mark Olmus and I'll be here to take you through eight races at Belmont Park on Saturday, August 12. The Belmont New Market meeting. It looks to be an interesting meeting with the weather expected and the weather that we've been having in Perth. It hasn't been all too great and we are expecting more showers on Saturday, anywhere between 6 and 20 mils. Hopefully the meeting goes ahead after the Wednesday meeting was abandoned, but it doesn't look pretty. We will be having a heavy track, there's no doubt about that. Hopefully some drying weather comes through, but yes, it will be a dreary old day in Perth. The rail will be out 15 metres. Initially it was going to be in the true. It's now 15 metres with a cutaway in the straight. And there are a couple of changes on the program to races two and races five. We'll go through those later. Just a couple of distance changes, but be sure to check the Chris website for all the updates and all the uh, other weather changes predicted from the Bureau of Meteorology. We'll start things off with race number one, the Tab Touch maiden over 1,400 metres. This event set to jump at 11.48 local time and replay horse will take a look at is Quest to Venus way through Savoy Queen near the rail and his and hers coming to the extreme outside at the 250 Miss Ponderosa hit the front quickly tackled though by Dark Prospect and Dark Prospect shortly afterwards reaches the lead Quest of Venus battling away Tyson fight then followed in Dacre but as they come away inside the last 100 Dark Prospect is really drawing clear and Dark Prospect was too good for... Not a bad run by Quest to Venus there but speaking to Clint Johnston Porter after the race he just thought that the mayor had every possible chance to run down the winner on that occasion, which was Dark Prospect, first starter from the Neville Parnham Yard. Barrier 4 gets another nice run through. Chris Parnham takes over. Rode a double last Saturday, so he is in great form. Settled three back on the fence. Uh, you may not have seen the replay, but once Savoy Queen slotted in front of her, just wanted to get over racing for a few strides. That could have cost her, but this mare looks to have a bit of ability, just doesn't have that killer instinct. She'll certainly be in the mix from the good barrier, though. Uh, Miss Ponderosa was also in that race, run third on that occasion. From the wide draw, barrier 14, went and sat outside of the leader and battled on quite well to be beaten three and a half lengths. I think from barrier two, maybe a bit of cover can certainly improve and should be sprinting home quite well late over this 1400 metre trip. Having a look at a few other chances in the race, we've got streak away. Of course, the Wednesday meeting was abandoned, so a couple of those from those maidens come to this one. Streak away is one of those. 1400 metres here. Look, it can run well from barrier six. The other Parnham brother, Brad Parnham, rides this one. It's a race of many chances. Even number three, Costa Oster, has been in good form since returning. The son of Costa, in Costa de Lago ran second first up and then third last start behind Iron Maggie and has had a couple of weeks between runs. But I'm going with number 10 here, Miss Ponderosa. I think there's improvement to come from this mare by High Chaparral. From number 12, streak away, number nine, Quest to Venus, and the three, Costa Oast. Race number two at Belmont Park is the Bernard Couch Memorial Handicap. Now this is a race that has been altered. It was initially 2,000 metre race. It is now 2,100 metres due to the change in the rail position. It will be out 15, of course, on the card. So this race, a 2,100 metre race. Please take note, punters. Our replay horse is It's a Him, running second last start behind Rosewood Hill. Turner and Harlem Moon pulling up to a walk. They're in the home straight. Shintamani led the forgotten one. Three lengths responded. Rosewood Hill, Pike spotting, runs over towards the inside. Look at her come, 200 left to go and she's got a head full of steam and it's a hymns coming down the outside but Rosewood Hill gather them up now storming to the front, this has been a cagey cool confident ride by Pike on the favourite and she dominated and she won it easily We saw the replay there of it's a him running second behind Rosewood Hill, this race coming up though is a fascinating one because you go back and look at the form out of it, it's a him and Rosewood Hill they had the buttons pushed on them at the exact same time, Rosewood Hill went along the inside and scooted through to win dominantly by two and a half lengths and it's a him came to the outside probably didn't get the right card into the race behind Kirov boy but still found the line well working towards some of his better form but by no means is anywhere near his peak which saw him win group ones as a three-year-old so look he can run well again it's a him the highlighted horse there Fred W Kersley goes on claims three kilos only has to carry the 58 and a half 2100 metres. Look, I think this galloper will be there and thereabouts. Shintamani led them up on that occasion in the replay we just saw. I thought she ground away quite well to only be beaten by three and a half lengths. The start before was also outside of the speed. With a bit of cover, she can probably improve. I think she's got a nice turn of speed with a bit of cover. She's probably up to this grade. Well, getting there anyway. And look, she can run a nice race with a bit of cover from Barrier 7 if Jason Whiting 
can go back to near last and make his run with the likes of Gadding. Uh, the mare by Viscount can certainly be in the mix. The forgotten one, probably not up to this class. We also saw in that replay. But Gadding, of course, the reigning WATC Derby winner. Beaten last start in the Belmont Classic. when wide from the 600 metre mark. Had to come about 10, 11 horses off the fence and had to do a lot of work. Wasn't aided by the fact that Mature Autier dropped the whip at the 200 metre mark. But we know this galloper by hard spun has all of the class in the world. He needs to show it here before he can get on a float to Kalgoorlie. But he looks hard to beat with Randy Tan taking one and a half kilos off. Also in the race, we have Thunderclap Newman can grow a leg in the heavy conditions. And Ripper Rio, of course, a nice runner-up effort behind Astronomite, which has since come out and won again. I'm going with number two, though, on top. Gadding, he looks mighty hard to beat. From number six, Shintamani. She can improve out of sight here with a bit of cover. Number one, it's a him. And number five, the last start runner-up, Ripper Rio. Race number three on the card at Belmont Park is the Bob Cramp 80th birthday handicap. It's over 1,000 metres, a 72-plus event. And the replay horse will take a look at is more races Side winning all the all way last time. Bell's start. Tower at the top of the home straight, followed further back, Agachar Cruz. More races in front, though, and took them to the 250, two and a half in front of Pop Hero. Belter battling away, then came Atacama Sky, starting to run on, but more races had shaken them off at the 100-metre mark, and he looked home. Atacama Sky is starting to run on very strongly with two silver trees, but too good for the more races. Yes, the now four-year-old by Zazu put him away quite comfortably last start. Was $2.10 out to $2.90, but defied that betting drift to win quite easily and hold off all comers. You look at the horses that beat, there wasn't too many in behind them. Pop Hero, Atacama Sky, which are also in this race, were quite comprehensively beaten. Uh, look, the drift was an alarm before the race, but defy that quite comfortably. The Apprentice goes on here, Fred W. Kersey, takes off three kilos from 58 and a half, and it actually carries half a kilo less than what it did when winning last start. So if he gets to the lead, he will be mighty hard to run down again. Agachar Cruz, only fair, now a seven-year-old. He's probably coming towards the end of his career, having his 28th start here. Pop Hero was also in that run. Probably needed a bit of cover to be able to finish off a bit better in the heavier conditions. He will handle the conditions. Barrier 6, Jason Whiting, I think, will go back and try to find cover and running. And Atacama Sky, because of the wide barrier last start, went back to last, and we saw that he can run on, especially with a uh, checkered passage through. Look, Record was still questioning his class. He can run a nice race, but look, it's a race with plenty of chances. Even Mr Motown comes into this race fresh, and he doesn't mind the soft going either. But I'm going with number two, more A. On top of number three, Mr. Motown, number eight, Atacama Sky, and the four, Recall. Race four on the program at Belmont Park is the Seacourt Plate over 1,000 metres. It's for the new three-year-olds, and Replay Horse will take a look at is my Demi running fourth last start, but keep an eye out for Whacked Out, Frosty Bay, and Foxy Princess through now. A uh, length and a half off those whacked out. Turbo powers down near the rail, followed by Frosty Bay and Akina Curry and then Demons and Dust, but it's Cognac in front by the 200. About a length clear. Danes Marie taking a day to get there. It'll take a fortnight to get there. Cognac has raced away from it. It's got them absolutely done, Cognac. Gee, he's a smart bulldog, this fellow, and he's been a real find here through the winter. This team. My Demi held the rail and only battled away for fourth, but we've seen David Harrison train runners improve from their first up runs to their second up runs. Tongue tie is applied here. I dare say there will be improvement for the gelding by my Atacanta. Patrick Carberry from Barry 11 is sure to scrub him along out of the barriers and get him in a forward position. As we're whacked out now, the winkers go on and the tongue tie goes on. Those gear changes could make all the difference. Of course, he's out of that Barrakee and Barrakee beats family, which all have a few head problems between the ears. So he could improve vastly. He did pull up with an upper respiratory tract infection after that effort we saw on the replay. Uh, so it was disappointing, but there were excuses there. The recent trial was speedy. This galloper can jump and run from barrier seven. He certainly could be hard to catch. Out of that replay, we saw Foxy Princess back last. Had to be ridden for luck. She was only beaten four lengths in a Karakata plate, so her best could be close to winning here. Neville Parker takes over training duties with Simon Foster going to career. Frosty Bay didn't have all the best of luck in that race either. Number 13, a first starter here, Colour Witness, a filly by Star Witness. 
Purchases are waning for seven and a half thousand dollars. Vern Brockman trains. He certainly knows how to get a two-year-old up and running, but he's taking his time with this three-year-old filly. Recent trials very sharp over 930 metres at Lark Hill down the back straight there in soft conditions. Clock 56.89, which suggests that uh, this filly could well be up to the mark. And from barrier three, probably be thereabouts, just off the speed with the hot tempo expected. So I'm going with the filly on top here, number 13, Colour Witness. From number one, Whacked Out, the reigning Perth Stakes winner. Number three, My Demi. And number nine, first starter, Say It.